is going on Dolphins? It is your boy Dylan. I am back with you for my uh, Dolphins Raiders recap. Um, so before I actually get into everything, I just want to say that, uh, well, first of all, um, we're 3-0, and which is fantastic, which means we get to go into Foxborough next week at 3-0, and still leading the division. Uh, the Patriots are actually playing right now. I have the game on uh, off to the side, so I am watching that. It's currently in the second quarter, almost halfway through the second quarter, 10-0 to Detroit. They're playing the Lions, and they're uh, at least within field goal range right now, so they're moving the ball. Honestly, with the way that the Patriots have been playing, they're still going to be without Edelman. Josh Gordon's not active for this game. He might not be next week. Who knows? But I think that we actually will stand a really good chance of beating New England in Foxborough next week. But that's for another thing. Just wanted to toss that in there right now. But if New England loses tonight to Detroit, Detroit, mind you, who got... Uh, Molly walloped by uh, the Jets who we obviously beat last week then that would be outstanding the Bills surprisingly beat the Vikings today so they're now one and two the Jets lost their game on Thursday so they're uh, one and two man if the Patriots could drop to one and two in this game oh my god can we even imagine going into Foxborough at three and oh with the rest of the entire division division one and two good lord who would have thought that but and like i said i think we actually stand a pretty good chance of beating new england in foxborough this year not just you know because i've been predicting that this whole time and whatever and not just because i want to say it or whatever but i i really think so they haven't been playing all that great anyway so <clears throat> uh there's that this game was great in a lot of ways now i understand you guys you know maybe frustrated about how some of the the stuff unfolded particularly in the first half and so was i i was livid man and the reason why though i want doll fans to understand this the team played exceptionally well the entire game um both offense defense and special teams the entire game they were playing fantastic i'll get into the stats and stuff in a little bit um but they really did it was the officiating and from what i've been hearing from other reports and stuff from other games around the nfl apparently this week the officiating has just been pretty bad uh you know period um across all the games so far so it's not just us but there was some pretty terrible calls there was a couple pass interference calls on us that were absolutely ridiculous shouldn't have been called um you know there was uh it, when akeem spence got ejected you know there i first of all i definitely think that there should have been a um uh, unnecessary roughness call on both players even if they wanted to eject him, there still should have been, uh, uh, you know, I personally don't think that they should have evict or ejected him because when you watch the replay, they were both pushing, they were hand fighting, they were pushing each other in the, in the chest, in the face, you know, and then uh, uh, Akeem Spence gets pushed back. He trips over one of the Raiders guys, and that's when the helmet comes pulling off. So I don't think he actually meant to do that. But anyway, it is what it is. I don't think they should have ejected him. But even if they did, they should have still had a rough, uh, unnecessary roughness on both of them and offset the penalties. But instead, it gave the Raiders a first down when we just sacked uh, Derek Carr uh, on third down, and it would have been they would have been punting to us. I really wholeheartedly believe that this game would have been a lot more like I had predicted had the the refs not been so terrible in the first half. I mean, it was outrageous, absolutely outrageous. Uh, but anyway, so that that was a big thing. But this team prevailed; they overcame, and at the very end, or in, in the you know in the second half, they they mounted the comeback and they had some really creative impressive explosive plays to help do that um which i'll talk about and i'll show you guys a little bit uh of that as well here soon um but anyway so getting into it though so we win the game 28 to 20 dolphins beat the raiders we are at home we are now three and zero. that is so beautiful i love it um so let's see for stats 
373 total yards for us. They had 434. We had 332 passing yards, 325 for them. We only had 41 rushing yards, and Ryan Tannehill actually led in rushing. So rushing we actually had a problem with this game but it it just goes to show that the, we are still capable of winning despite the fact that we couldn't stop the run hardly and uh you know we weren't doing very good with our own running game we only had 41 rushing yards they had 109 so they definitely got some things uh to clean up with that and hopefully you know i know they will i know they're going to continue to get better and everything uh so i'm not too worried about it but then when you go to yards per play we had 9.6 yards per play so we were actually you know moving the ball really well and that's the thing when you watch this game you know for all of you that did watch it if you rewatch it whatever we the offense was clicking man they were they were doing good things they were moving the ball and then it was all these stupid calls man it, like i've already said my piece on that so i'm not going to get into it too much but it was the officiating for sure in the first half that it, you know there were calls that uh should have been made that weren't and you know to be fair because i'm fair there was, you know, uh, a couple penalties on them that I, I think were real ticky-tack. You know, they had some on us that are, were ticky-tack, definitely some bullshit ones. And then there were plays, you know, where they should have called penalties and they didn't. Um, but anyway, so I digress. Moving past that, they, uh, like I said, we had a 9.6 yards per play. They had 5.9. We didn't lose any fumbles. They didn't lose any fumbles. But we, we did get two interceptions. Uh, Xavier Howard had two interceptions. His first one was beautiful, which you'll see here. Uh, he had, um, they, uh, good Lord, uh, there was good pressure on Derek Carr. Uh, he scrambled around, he, he kind of backpedaled a little bit, came out of the pocket, stepped back up, he went to, to, to throw it deep, and where he threw it, uh, I guess his receiver kind of gave up on him, where he threw it, there was only three Dolphins. So Xavier Howard gets the pick, takes it back, I think like 30 something yards, um, which was fantastic. It was phenomenal. You know, this defense is getting turnovers. They are being aggressive. And despite the fact that they were, you know, super gassed towards the end of the game, they still made crucial plays at crucial times. Um, so anyway, and then uh, he also had one, which I'll show you here. Uh, he kind of scrambles around in the pocket a little bit or steps back drops back in the pocket cam wait comes zipping around the edge he goes to throw the ball into the uh, fade into the back corner to martavis bryant and x comes up with a huge play this was later on in the game and this helps seal the victory for us uh so that was amazing absolutely amazing the some of the the big plays that we made at the at the end of the game were just phenomenal um so, you know, we, we did have a problem, a, a little bit of a problem with third down conversions. Again, we were only 25%. They were at 53%. But again, some of that had to do, and with the time of possession as well, which you, you'll see in a minute, some of that had to do with the officiating and not so much how we were actually performing because we were doing quite well. And that just goes to show you because we ended up beating them by eight points and we were able to win. You know, we were able to overcome, you know, the crap calls or whatever. We had the ball for 21 minutes. 29 seconds they had it for 38 minutes 31 seconds and all in all there were a total of 17 penalties in this game nine on us eight on them moving on for ryan Tannehill, he performed very well he was very efficient uh he was 17 for 23 um so that gives him a 73.9 completion percentage for 289 yards three touchdowns no interceptions with 155.3 passer rating in this game beautiful he did amazing he did everything he needed to do um and for you know this season as it stands now i have i have his stats for the first three games he was 73 percent uh 73 percent completion percentage for 687 yards seven touchdowns two interceptions 9.3 yards per reception uh and 121.8 passer rating through the first three games so he is doing phenomenal he's doing everything that he needs to do uh for the most part obviously we still do have some things to clean up and and we will i do think this team is going to continue to get better and better and the, again just one last time the the big issue in this game was the the terrible officiating to start with anyway so real quick i'll tell you about uh kenny stills had a touchdown as you will see here um 
It was a beautiful bomb. Tannehill had time in the pocket. He drops back. Uh, he was getting a little bit of pressure, but he throws it. He takes a deep shot. Uh, Kenny Stills, he hits Kenny Stills perfectly, drops a dime in there into the back of the end zone, uh, and he was covered by two guys. It was amazing. Um, I, I really, you know, their their chemistry, their connection is fantastic and, and continues to grow and blossom, um, which is wonderful. And then also, too, real quick, I'll go ahead and tell you about uh, Devontae Parker. He was back for this game, as you'll see here in this clip. Uh, Devontae Parker had a nice catch with double coverage down the sideline um, for a big gain. Um, and, and so he had... I'll get into his stats in a minute, but you know he wasn't. Uh, he had a good game. I mean, the 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 obviously Adam Gase wants to spread the ball around, so a lot of people had receptions, and there were you know catches to go around. So he had like three or four catches for like 40 yards. It wasn't super spectacular, but he did his part, and that's that's great. And he is. Uh, you know, the more he can get reacclimated in and everything, I think he will continue to grow and this offense will just start to flourish. Um, huh, okay, so moving on. Um, also, Albert Wilson. Uh, I guess this actually will be a good time to show you this clip. Albert Wilson uh, had a, a pass. It was a, a touchdown uh, throw to Jakeem Grant. First of all, Albert Wilson was one for one, 100% uh completion percentage he only had one throw it was for 52 yards and a touchdown so here it is i'll show you right now um ryan Tannehill takes the snap right he fakes like he's gonna uh pitch it to jakeem grant he hands it to frank gore who uh hands it to albert wilson who's coming across the back of the formation jakeem grant you know uh runs out for his route down the right sideline Albert Wilson comes around, lobs him the pass, pu uh, perfect throw. Jakeem Grant takes it the rest of the way, makes a couple guys miss, and goes in for the touchdown. I mean, these guys are just phenomenal. I think also, real quick, I do want to say that in the first half, I will say that Adam Gase's play calling was a little too conservative. I didn't like you know some of it i think he needed to adjust a little bit quicker but he definitely brought it on for sure in the second half um anyway so moving on through these stats Derek carr was 27 for 39 uh with 340 he was like 80 i think it was like 80 something percent completion percentage for 345 yards one touchdown two interceptions with an 83.8 passer rating um, so anyway, getting into the rushing stats, again, we definitely needed to do better on both sides of the ball, uh, but we were able to overcome that as well. Um, Ryan Tannehill led with three rushes for 26 yards and an 8.7 average. Him using his legs is great. We absolutely need that to continue. Uh, Frank Gore was six for 12 yards, two average. Kenyon Drake was five for three yards with a .6 average. So they didn't do so hot, the running backs, um, but Again, we were able to overcome that and come away with the victory. Marshawn Lynch had 19 attempts for 16 yards, one touchdown, only a 3.4 average though. So we weren't terrible, terrible, terrible with the run. This was our probably our worst game so far. Doug Martin also contributed nine carries for 43 yards and a 4.8 average. Um, let's see. Okay, and then so moving into... Uh, receiving uh our for us like i said we like to obviously we're going to be spreading the ball around um and there's going to be a lot of people touching it so albert wilson uh led he was two for two 74 yards um with one touchdown and uh 37 average okay and so real quick here i'll tell you about um Take a uh, you know take a take a look at this clip right here. This is Albert Wilson's touchdown. Um, it was kind of just like a, a, a it was a run. It was an outside run. It was it was a shovel pass though, so it actually counted I think towards Tannehill's stats as a pass. But he takes it around the left side of the formation, breaks through, and just puts on the burners all the way to the end zone. Jakeem Grant catches up with him. They high five on the play and you know, it was it was awesome. I mean, they, they just they kept bringing it. It was fantastic. They just kept doing all, you know, 
uh, look, like I said, this team played really well. If it wasn't for the terrible officiating, this game would have been probably a lot closer to what I said, probably like 48 to 14, like I had guessed. But anyway, that is what it is. Jakeem Grant was next. He was two for three for 70 yards and two touchdowns with a 23.3 average. And this will be a good time to show you this clip. This was actually his first touchdown. Um, this was also a shovel pass which then you know counts towards uh ryan Tannehill's stats as a pass so it was a, a receiving touchdown um but he goes around the right right side uh to the to the edge of the formation the right edge of the formation um breaks through makes a couple guys miss takes it in for the touchdown and you know it, it i mean the speed that these guys have this is why this is why you know adam gase wanted these guys because they can they can get around to the edge they can break you know tackles they can make people miss and stuff like that and you know just the abilities that they have are you know absolutely amazing and allow our offense to be that much more explosive uh anyway so moving on let's go ahead and get through the rest of these stats uh, Kenny Stills was 3 of 5 for 61 yards, 1 touchdown, 12.2 average. Danny Amendola was 3 for 3 for 42 yards with a 14 average. Devontae Parker was 2 of 3 for 40 yards, 13.3 average. Mike Gesicki had 3 catches, uh, targeted 3 times for 31 yards and a 10.3 average. AJ Derby was 1 for 1 for 16 yards and 16 average. Kenyon Drake, 2 for 4, 7 yards, 1.75 average. So you see there, all of our, besides Kenyon Drake, not a single one of the receivers had less than a 10.3 average. So we were really flying in the in the passing game. Didn't do shit in the in the run game, but you know, flying in the passing game. Um, and besides Jordy Nelson for them, we held their receivers pretty in check. And frankly, we uh Xavier Howard um kept Amari Cooper on complete lockdown. His interception in uh or and and anybody else that he um, you know went up against, like his interception in the back corner against Martavis Bryant. He he's he's a shutdown corner, and you know we should uh, be fortunate, I guess. You know he's he's definitely developing into the player that we expect and we we need him to be. Uh, sorry, just real quick. Right now the Detroit Lions are leading New England thirteen to thirteen to zero, and it's about to be the end of the half and the Detroit Lions get the ball back after half. Uh, anyway, so getting into this, Jordy Nelson was 6 for 8, 173 yards, one touchdown, 21.6 average. Jalen Richard was 6 for 7, 59 yards, 8.4 average. Jared Cook was 5 for 6, 31 yards, 5.2 average. Martavis Bryant, 2 for 5, 30 yards, 6 average. Marshawn Lynch was 3 for 3, 22 yards and a 7.3 average. Um, in this game, there was only one fumble by Jordy Nelson, but it wasn't it was not lost. Uh, he ended up getting it back. Um, and so moving into defensive statistics. So for us, our defensive leaders, Kiko Alonso has been flying all over the place. He had a total of 15 tackles in this game. Seven solo, eight assisted. Uh, Jerome Baker then had seven solo, two assisted. Bobby McCain had five solo, three assisted with a pass defense. TJ McDonald was three solo, four assist, one pass defense. Vincent Taylor, three uh, solo, four assist, one sack, two tackles for loss. Devon Godshaw, three solo, one tackle for loss. William Hayes, uh, two solo, one sack, two tackles for loss. Cameron Wake, one solo. Uh, two assists, one sack, and Xavier Howard had one tackle, but then he had two interceptions with a return of 39 yards on the one and three passes defensed. He is absolutely crushing it, killing it. Uh, for them, they had uh, their defensive leaders were, and look at this in comparison, this is crazy. Leon Hall had three solo tackles. Um, Clinton McDonald had two solo, one assisted, one sack, one tackle for loss. Gary Codley had two solo tackles, one pass defense. Rashawn Melvin had one solo tackle, one pass defense. And uh, Markel Lee had one solo, one tackle for loss. And Dominique Rogers Camardi had uh, nothing. He, nothing. Huh? 
I don't know why I had him in there. Anyway, so I mean, they they didn't even rack up all that many tackles. It's crazy. I mean, they obviously had other guys too, but you know, the most any one guy had was three. Our our guys were flying around all over the place. Anyway, so um, you know, there's the defensive statistics. Moving on uh, into the kicking game, Jason Sanders didn't have to kick any field goals, but he was four for four on his extra points. Mike Nugent for them had two field goals. He made both of them with a long of 52, and he was good on both of his extra points. Uh, in the punting game, Matt Hawk had six punts, and here, here's another reason why special teams did great. Uh, Matt Hawk had six punts with a 47 average. Four of those six were inside the 20 and a long of 63. Johnny Townsend for them uh, had three punts, 37.3 average, one inside the 20 with a long of 54. Uh, kickoff return, Jakeem Grant had four with a 26.3 average, not bad at all, with a long of 32. Dwayne Harris had two for 19 and a half average with a long of 21. Uh, punt returns, we didn't have any punts. Um, didn't have any punt returns. Uh, Dominique Rogers Camardi had one for them, uh, but it was a fair catch. He didn't return it. Journey Nelson, same thing. And Dwayne Harris had one, which he returned for 11 yards with a long of 11. Um, so there you have it, guys. Um, that's the breakdown of the game. Gave you all the stats. Uh, you know, I've shown you, you know, all the the big plays that we made. You know, gave you the breakdown, how I felt about it. I hope you guys like this video. I have the, you know, post game press conferences and stuff for you at the end, of course, as well. So I hope you guys like that as well. If you do, if you did, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave all your questions, comments, and concerns in the comment section. Um, you know, and share it with your friends and family, spread it around. We're growing fast. You know, I owe that to you guys. I love doing this for you. This is so much fun and you know, we're racking them up. We're, we're going to have a, we're going to continue to have a big year. I know that I feel, you know, I feel it to my bones. So with that said, guys, three, and zero going in for an upset next week into Gillette stadium, it's going to happen. And I will see you guys soon. Fins up. Team win, great, great team effort, man. It took everybody in the receiver room to, to make plays, but you know, for me to have you know 50 kids from an elementary school that from my hometown, man, that probably never seen an NFL game, for me to come out and, and give them a show, it's a blessing. I know they, I know they loved it. Your quarterback for St. Louis, you showed them, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Um, it was, it was cool, man. Definitely, you know, to, to get a pass to another receiver in the room, man, especially somebody that you know that that we grind to every day. Yeah, it was awesome. Does that play, does that play the name? Was that? Does that play have a name? It's not really. No, How long have you been bugging Adam to, to run that play that you throw the ball? Actually, I never really mentioned it. Um, he, we have so much stuff, man. It's just whatever it's called, man. We just go out there and try to execute. When you, I hope. Can you see in the Raiders' faces just sort of them resigned? They got behind me so quick, I didn't really see their faces. <laughs> How surprised? <laughs> How surprised were you when that play call came in for you to throw the ball? Oh uh, man, it's something we've been working on. Um, I'm ready for everything he called, for every play, every run play, every pass play, every throwing play, whatever he has for me, I'm ready for it. When you saw Jakeem that wide open, did you have to think, yeah, don't uh, have to Exactly, man. That's how I was just get the ball to him because I know he was going to score. So that was the, that was pretty much all I had in my head. What's the Luke thing about this? said that, that. He said when the play was called, you said to him, you better catch it. Exactly. Now, well, I said he better catch it, and I said he better not get tackled. That's what it was. Who's up on the fine box now? Who's up on the fine box now? What's that? The fine box with him. Who's up on that? $100. Oh, um... <laughs> I don't really know. We gotta get in the film room and find out. Yeah, but I do owe them a hundred dollars. Oh, but yeah. whose idea was the high five? Oh man, you know that's something I got from Tyreek. He did back in Kansas City. You know, just to show my boys in Kansas City some love. I had the opportunity, so I, I did it for them. What's it, what's it say about this team down 17-7? Oh man, just heart, man. That's all it takes, man. It's a bunch of effort from a, a from everybody. Like you said, we like I said earlier, it it took everybody in the office room to you know put them points on the board and. You know, for all of us to be included in, in this win, man, it's, it's something good. Uh, <laughs> we have a, uh, a thing, you know, left side, corner's best friend is a pass rusher, pass rusher's best friend is a corner. So, um, 
you know, I think he understands that. He had made good plays today. I think some of the guys up front trying to do their best to get pressure on the quarterback and maybe throw Aaron pass and he picks it off. He made it. He did his job and vice versa. You know, the quarterback tries to make that read. He doesn't have time. We get sacked. So playing hand in hand, I mean, obviously no, nothing to take away from him, but um, I think working together creates, you know, plays for everybody all over the field. What, what kind of challenge was it out there today where the rotation is just down to three ends and three defensive tackles? Uh, well, welcome to South Florida. You know, that's part of the business, you know, in this game that we love. Um, injuries are a big part of it. It's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. And I think you got to take your hat off to the guys, the way we train out there in the heat, day in and day out, you know, when it's not so much fun. Um, but those are the times that it pays off. You know, I think uh, we all spoke about it. If we hadn't gone through some of the things we went through over the course of camp, OTAs, those long days, hot, struggling through it, maybe we wouldn't have had the tolerance to fight through a, a game like today. So, again, my hat goes off to those guys who are out there literally getting down deep in your soul and, and pull, going to a dark place, pulling out whatever you could to make sure you finish this game. And those guys did so, uh, me included. So um, I think it's a tribute to the coaching staff and the way we practice, the way we play. And, uh, you know, it paid off today. Cam, after you got your sack and Spence was ejected, how important was it for you guys to just hold them to the field goal on that drive? Well, we do our best not to, you know, clock, clock watch or scoreboard watch, but you got to stay in the game in the moment. You know, every play you got to go out there and, do your best to keep points off the board. You know, that's our job. Um, like I said, we shot ourselves in the foot, made some mistakes we made as far as, you know, extending drives. And, uh, you know, we just had to go out there and say, listen, we got to put it into this, whatever it takes. Like I said earlier, it doesn't matter how many guys we got. It doesn't matter if you're tired or you're hurt. Nobody cares. Go out there and get your job done. And uh, we did today. And with defensive players' perspective of the guys who plays one for touchdowns, what do you think they look well, we've seen them already, so uh, <laughs> it was a surprise to you guys. But we we had them. We've been seeing them all week. Um, but it's another one of those things where you know, <laughs> it's it's a little bit leery as far as what's going to happen, especially you know having haven't seen them already. But you know, I think they I don't know if they worked perfectly, but they worked, and uh, it's definitely a lot of fun watching you know guys run down the sideline untouched, you know, high five and and going in the end zone and scoring. That was that was a treat for sure. <laughs> no, no. We like getting points on the board. We'll, we'll take our uh, our chances when we go out there. Kim, uh, there's been some unsportsmanlike conduct penalties by some members of the defense the last couple of games. What is it that you kind of want to see your teammates so you don't shoot yourself in the foot? Well, I, I mean, I don't even know what happened. I'd love to go back and see the video. Um, but regardless of what it is, you you got to do your best to kind of stay and stay focused. You know, look at the big picture. You know, you may lose the battle, win the war. You know, that sometimes may be the case. Um, again, I, I didn't see the play. I have no clue what happens. Sounds like it could have been a call either way. I don't know. Um, I'm sure you guys will go over the film. But um, things that are as they are, you got to be mindful of that. I gotta watch that. I gotta watch that film too. But it was, it was a bit of a surprise coming in and seeing him. I, th I thought something was mixed up. Like, what are you? Okay. All right. Look, this is what you're going to. do. <laughs> Let's get down four point. Do exactly what you don't like us doing when we're going against you. So um, I think he did a good job. In all, in all seriousness, did you recognize him right away, or were you kind of? Wrong? Well, I knew the situation. I think. I mean, we don't have enough guys. So you know, again, whatever it takes. And <laughs> sometimes it takes an old lineman to go in there and be a defender. Uh, so I, I'm sure he. Had fun with that as well. I'm gonna have to go talk to Coach Wash, see if I can get some plays called. That would, that would be interesting, I'm sure. Cam, three, three and oh, what does that mean to this football team right now? And what is your mindset as you move forward? Well, I hope it, it's something that builds confidence in the guys. You know, I think if you look at our, our team, the way it's built, and games like the first home game, the longest game in history, games like the past game where, you know, it could have gone either way and we had to fight and scratch and claw and do whatever it took to, to you know, get that W. Um, I, I hope, I mean, it builds character regardless of what else goes on. It wasn't pretty, but whatever it took to win, you know, guys did it. And 3-0 and feels good. You know, definitely feels good. But at the same time, it's you got to wipe the slate clean. Enjoy it for the next 24 hours or so. Pat yourself on the back. Get in there tomorrow. Fix, 
fix things that we didn't do so well and erase the board and let's move on. And we got to be one, one and zero after next week. After the 24 hours, you, you look up to New England, and that's a team that you, can, you, got, you need to try to unseat. That's where you guys want to do. That's what you got to do, an opportunity to go up there and, and try to beat a good football team in their backyard. They've had a lot of success when you guys have gone up there. Um, how much will you think about that, and, and how much will you try to just you know, get everyone on the same page and, and, and get that job done? Well, I think, like I said, for the next few hours, we'll enjoy this one, but um, quickly we'll be moving on. And I don't think the narrative is going to change. You got to go out there, you got to do whatever, especially on defense. Read your keys, play what's shown, be where you're supposed to be for the entire game. You know, it can't be all right, four or five plays I missed out because, you know, a good teams capitalize on that. So. Um, it's no different than any other week. You got to go in there and we got to wipe the slate clean, zero and zero, be one and zero when the uh, week's over with. When the team was practicing way back in the day, Wildcat and Joey Porter, you remember, said, really, this is what it's come to. When you see the trick plays that you've been practicing in front of you for the last two weeks, you thought, what? Hope it works. <laughs> I, I mean, it's uh, trick play. I mean, I, it's it's offense. They they motion. They got different sets. They it's, it's part of the, the game. And as a defender, you have to whatever your keys are. You read your keys, and you have to do your best to make the play. And whatever it's a reverse, throwback, whatever it is, I'm sure they have keys that they were supposed to read. And I guess somebody dropped the ball. And again, as I spoke earlier, one play can be the you know make you or break you. And you can't have on defense, you can't have one mistake, two mistakes. That's two touchdowns, you lose the game. Offense, they can have a couple series and, you know, not work out so well and go out and hit a 70-yard touchdown and they're back in business. So as, as it stands for us on defense, it's every play, 60 minutes, no matter what. Um, yeah, we was working at um, this whole time, you know, and we finally got to run it in the game. And, you know, Coach was telling us this whole time, you know, it's going to be there. You know, just uh, use your speed and run. And I trusted my boy Albert. And every single time in practice, it was always on the money. Were you surprised Albert had an arm like that? Oh, not at all. He showed me that in practice, like time after time and time after time again. And he was just like, just don't stop running, just run. And so, you know, we worked on that. It was just the chemistry was there. His touchdown, the sheer joy then, the high fire at the end there. Oh, yeah, um, that's just, you know, uh, just NASCAR on the uh, grass, you know. Um, me and Albert running side by side, that just showed that, that just showed that, you know, we care about each other and just, you know, celebrating each other's touchdown and just showing you that, you know, that's a brotherhood outside of this, um, outside of this facility and this football thing. So, I mean, man, it was just, it was just a, a joy, man. How much fun was that fourth quarter with the play calling and obviously with the results? I mean, it was, it, it was a lot of fun, man. Um, what turned it over, man, is the big, the big catch from Levante. You know, um, and that's exactly what we wanted from him, man. And we're glad to have him back. Um, and that's what just sparked it, man. You know, and and once that once that happened, you know, the wheels just kept turning, and the ball just kept turning over. And and I I, I can say that we was on fire, man. And, then, and just uh, how the difficulty for other teams defending speed. Mm -hmm. how, how did, what is the kind of challenge you guys present to other teams with that? Oh, man, like I said, coaches always say go out there and just run. And so, you know, a lot of defenders are going to be terrified of the speed and just don't do too much movement at the uh, line and just take off and run. And then we know that it's very hot here, and so um, we're used to the heat, the humidity, um, and so we're just going to go out there and run, and let's see if they can run for four quarters. How many times, how many times would you estimate you practice the play where Albert throws it to you? Um, every practice, man. Every practice we had, uh, me and Albert was practicing, and you know, we we it was just like you know that chemistry. I knew I knew that that was gonna be a touchdown, and all he told me was like, make sure, <laughs> make sure you score, and if you get tackled by you know one man in the open field, you owe me a hundred dollars. And now he owed me a hundred dollars for scoring because that's that's uh that's what we do, man. made some crucial plays, gave us a lot of life back when we were, i say, a little gas. And, uh, you know, like I said, it was a great team effort. And, um, 
Yeah, and even special team made some huge, crucial plays. So, like I said, it was a great team effort. And Oh, you brought Jesse Davis in for one point, too. How about that? <laughs> yeah, it shocked me, too. I seen him running on. I thought the offense was coming out, but <laughs> then I realized it was a goal line. But, you know, again, that just shows you when you get down, no matter who they call on, you just got to be ready to step up and do a job. And thank goodness Jesse didn't mind playing a little defense for a snap or two. Good Rob, stuff, Robert. Robert, just these long drives they were able to sustain, and then the fourth and one stop, you guys being able to keep the, this team in the game, what does it say about your defense? Um... I mean, well, as a defense, now, of course you don't want to allow an 80-yard drive. Um, but again, if they don't cross the goal line, they don't. They don't really matter how many yards they get. But uh, you know, that was a big play. You know, we gave up too many big plays to, to keep them in the game. But I think when it, when the plays needed to be made, and I think we did that. Gave ourselves a little life. Then the offense just they did what they did and just kept us, you know, rejuvenated. So. At the end of the day, it was an extremely uh, great team win. Um, and y'all saw the game win. It wasn't in our favor at first, but guys are stuck one play at a time. And, you know, we got the dub when it mattered. I, I, I guess the small guys came up big today, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, they played great for us. You know, I think we've known the talent they've had since, since the spring. Um, and it's all flashes in the last few games. You know, Jakeem's had, had a couple big plays for us. You know, the return in the first game. Albert makes a big plays for us. But today, they really, uh, really came out big for us. Some explosive plays. You know, they combined on the, uh, the uh, reverse pass there. Obviously, saw both of them. Uh, then Albert there on the last one. So, uh, so, yeah, proud of those guys and the way they played. Well, what were they able to do to make it so difficult for you guys to run the football? I think they did a good job up front. You know, I'll have to go back and look at the tape and, and really take a look at it. Uh, you know, we felt good about it coming in, but I uh, have to give credit to them. They were doing a good job of shedding blocks, it seemed like, and, and, and making plays. It, it had to be frustrating starting to move the ball, throwing the ball down the field, and then penalties would bring them back, and you, you lose the yards again, plus the penalty yards. And it seemed like that was going to be kind of the, the, the that was gonna, what was going to drag you guys down this football game before the big plays. How frustrating was it not to be able to keep those drives moving when you're having some success? Yeah, we had a couple penalties that hurt. The two pass interferences calls hurt. You know, um, you know, neither one of them are pick plays, so it was kind of surprising to, to see those called. But, uh, but yeah, evidently we, we didn't do a good job with our technique and, and the official called it. So those, those plays hurt, and, uh, and one was a big third down that we converted. One was uh, to start a drive. So, you know, whenever you're losing big plays like that and, and going getting losing 10 yards, not only plus the, the yards gained, it's uh, definitely a, a kick, in the, kick in the knee. You look at those two guys, Albert Wilson and Jakeem, how much they meant to your offense. These three weeks, it's funny to think back a year ago, and Albert Wilson was just trying to make the team catch and punts, and now he's become one of the biggest weapons you have in your offensive football team. Yeah, Jakeem's done a great job of, of growing as a football player. You know, I think we've, we saw his talent early on, his first couple of years on special teams, and then he really came on this spring as a receiver. And it started back in March, you know, where he's working out there with me twice a week, and uh, to see him grow as a receiver and his route running ability, uh, his technique, and, and way to use his speed and his size as an advantage uh, as far as leverage and, and getting the edge on guys. You know, it's definitely shown up big for us so far this season. Right, you guys are 3-0, and and I think you'd agree. You guys haven't played your best football yet. A lot of room for improvement. And this is one of those games where kind of struggle, struggle, struggle. You've got a lot of things to look at to improve on as you get ready for next week. But, but you're 3-0, and so kind of, you know, the best of the both worlds, I guess, worlds, I guess. You get to, see what you can improve on, but, but you're sitting there in pretty good shape. Yeah, you know, I think that's the game of football is sometimes it's not going to be pretty, but you have to have the grit and uh, the togetherness to be able to stick it through and find a way to win. So I'm proud of this team on the way we did that. You know, defense had a couple big stops for us down in the red zone, uh, the one early on, stopping them on fourth down. Um, and on offense, we just kept battling. It wasn't pretty, but, but our guys hung together. We made some big plays when it mattered and, uh, you know, found a way to come out on top. Ryan, there was, uh, we had a couple offensive running the football. Was there a point in the game where, like, we're going to win this because I'm going to, you know, throw the football and, and win it that way? Yeah, you kind of get the feeling as the game's going on, you know, the rhythm of the game and, and what it's going to take. Um, and they're doing a good job taking away the run. And I uh, felt like when we did throw the ball, we were doing a good job of getting open downfield. They were giving me a good pocket. So I knew that. Uh, the number was called, and we would be in a good spot to, uh, to execute. With, with them, sorry, with Bob, well, the way you have this, this quick strike offense, do you feel like you're ever out of the game? No, no. You know, that's the thing is uh, you don't want to be in that position. But uh, 
with the talent that we have and the explosiveness that we have, you know, we just have to keep doing our job and not press, not try to do too much. Everyone just execute and do your job, and, and we'll find a way to get in the end zone. Does anything different go through your mind when that trick play is called? Anything? Well, I'm just thinking about my responsibility, you know, making sure we line up right, um, the mic point, and then everyone's good with the motion, and then, you know, helping out with the tight end on the block. But, you know, there's excitement in the huddle. The play comes in, and, you know, everyone kind of gets excited. Anytime there's a, a big shot call or a, a trick play, you can feel the, the offensive line, you know, kind of get excited. So. I think there was definitely some excitement, you know, leaving the huddle, and we were excited about that play coming into the game. It looked good during the week, and I said earlier, you know, you never know how those things are going to turn out. It could be uh, perfect like it, like it was, or, uh, you know, they could defend it well, but you never really know, and, you know, proud of the way they executed. You know, Albert did a great job of, of selling it and then throwing a great pass, and Jakeem caught it and, and made a couple guys miss and got in the end zone, so it was great execution all around. You're a quarterback, so you know what it feels like to see a receiver wide open down the field. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I know how hard that is to be running full speed, you know, laterally, and then uh, and make that throw. The thing is, during the week, he, he was con consistent on on making a perfect throw. You know, it wasn't ever a, a question that that you know he never stretched to came out or made him adjust. Really, it was always a perfect throw. So, you know, I was impressed during the week, and uh, he came out and executed the same way during the game. Do what? No, after I saw him run the first time, I thought, he got this. He doesn't need any tips. <laughs> any tips from him? Uh, no. <laughs> it's tips on speed, maybe. Speaking of Albert, talk about how you've been able to gel with him being new to the team. Sometimes it can take a moment for that relationship to be the way it needs to be for you to be clicking on all cylinders. But you guys have seemed to handle it well just in these first few games. Yeah, Albert came in and, and jumped in with both feet. You know, he was here in the spring in March. As soon as we signed him, you know, we were out there throwing twice a week, uh, had good turnout, and, and he's just a grinder, man. He comes to work every single day and, and puts his heart into it and just works. So when you have that kind of buy-in from a guy and, and a guy who's, who's willing to, to sacrifice and, and do whatever he can for this team to win, he's going to have success. You know, he can't help but have success. So, you know, I'm really proud of him and, and the way he's, he's come on for us. Brian, are you aware of the two pitches to Brandon Wilson, one of the scores, went down on the statue, is that a question? I mean, yeah, I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah. Bonus, man. No question. I'm well happy about it. Yeah, of course. I mean, why wouldn't I be? What about the, the touchdown to Kenny Stills, which probably was a little bit more up there on your degree of difficulty scale? Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, was a tough one. You know, they uh, stirred and long. They uh, came down, safety came down over Kenny. I saw him kind of playing flat footed. Offensive line did a good job just. Give me a little time, and, and Kenny was beating him with speed. So I just put it out there. Kenny made a great catch in the back of the end zone. That's tough to do, run at full speed. You know you're about to run into the wall. To concentrate, catch that ball, get his feet in. That's a big time play. Brian, Frank said he feels like something special is building that locker room. What do you believe? Do what? Frank said he believes something special is building in that locker room. What do you believe? I guess he believes. Yeah, I mean, I believe we're on the right track. You know, the, the patterns that we've established so far, the way we work in practice, uh, the way we support each other and stick together through adversity. We're on the right track. Are we there yet? No, but you know the patterns we, we we're establishing are going to take us there. So we just have to stay the course, keep working, and uh, take it one game at a time. Brian, it looked like the first quarter early on, it was a lot of the usual underneath stuff, taking whatever you could get. And it looked like at some point it evolved into challenging them more vertically down the field. Did anything change defensively that thought could allow you to do that, or is it just you know? I'm just wondering how that evolves as far as going for the short stuff and then eventually going for the long stuff. Yeah, they changed things up a little bit. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, that's just kind of the way the game fell, you know, the way the game was being called and, and the way we were, uh, we were playing on offense. So, um, yeah, there's nothing too crazy that I can say about it. It's just kind of the way the game went. <laughs>
you know, for those guys to go out there and execute it perfect, it was, it was good to see. It looked like for the good majority of the game that the running game on both sides of the ball uh, were going to be your downfall. You had a hard time running the football. They were able to, to move the ball. It was tough stopping them. What, what were they able to do running the ball, and what were they able to do to defend your run? I think they did a good job on offense of, you know, really holding on to it. And, and it was like death by a thousand paper clips. You know, they, they did a good job of just getting first down, first down. It just felt like every drive was really long. And, you know, it's, it's tough. You just got to stay tight. And it's just they have enough weapons to where if you get too tight and all of a sudden they go over the top and the drive becomes shorter. So, and on the offensive side, we just, we just couldn't get it going. We were trying a bunch of stuff. We had some run through early and we just didn't have the ball enough to really get in that kind of rhythm. Coach, what can you say about X, the way he's playing? I mean, comes up on a play where everyone else quits and he stays after it and makes the interception. And then the one where like, he'd make a huge play in the end zone comes up with a, with a big, big interception for you. Yeah, it looks like the guy that we've been we've seen really since you know training camp. So I think he's just trying to figure out a way to get better every day, and he's done it. He's practiced well, and we're starting to see it translate to the game. You win this game, but I think you, you, as you guys have talked about it in each and every game, there's still a lot of room for you guys to improve. Uh, is this the kind of game? Hey, we, you win, so that's the good news. But a, a lot of things you can work on to try to try to get guys better by the next week. Yeah, I think there's a lot of factors involved in this one. We had a lot of a lot of injuries. Felt like a lot of guys didn't come back from from what happened to them on the field, and you know having an injection that that really hurt us up front. I mean, it's uh, it was it was a it was a sauna out there, and really that's why we keep as many D linemen up as we do, so we can rotate those guys. And I think we had a lot of guys have to step up and play situations where they haven't done really in anything but a walkthrough. We had a lot of guys playing special teams that haven't had a ton of live reps because we lost some special teams guys. Where did you throw up that? Uh... Oh, it was just straight thievery. I mean, we, we, we stole it. That's a, that's an old March play. It's just nobody watches his old stuff, so they might now. Have you used it before? No. No, I think he scored on it probably 2001 or something. What do you call it? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not telling you guys that. There's plays off of plays. I don't want to tell our terminology. You took that when he was visiting? No, it's just. We got all kinds of stuff of his, and we kind of talked about some stuff when he was here, what what we could do because we we're really trying to expand, you know, Albert and Jakeem's packages and just keep growing them. And you know, we got guys that can do a lot of different things. They can they can throw it, they can run it, they can, you know, we've done a couple of things already this year that really has worked to our benefit. How many more of those are there? A lot. What, what did you see in the defense? That I mean, it was just, it's one of those plays that we, it's a plays, a plays off plays. You know, we've run similar plays to it and, you know, it's just one of those things you just don't think that's going to come. So I, I think it's, I'm glad it worked. It was good timing. So I thought those two guys made a really good, really good execution of the play. Are you playing down the trick plays that won this game for you? Uh, maybe a little bit. What do you see the team's confidence? Now going 3-0, knowing that next year you guys go up uh, and play the Patriots. Yeah, I don't think they're really focused too hard on that right now. We, we'll, we'll enjoy this one for the next 24 hours, and then after that, we'll worry about moving on to the next one. It's, I mean. Has that play worked in practice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it like for your defensive lineman on the sidelines? Uh, Oakland had the ball at one point for 837, and then coming back, they had the ball for 944. How hard? Plus, you're down three by the end of it. Yeah, I mean, really, for me, I was just thinking, how can we give those guys a rest and kind of regroup and, and be ready to go for the next series? And that's a it's a tough situation to be in because there's nowhere else to go. You know, those are the only guys. Those were the guys left, and you know, we knew they were gassed and they were. You could tell they they were fighting though. And that's 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 why I love this locker room as much as I do. Those guys, they just kept laying it on the line, trying to find a way to stop them. I, I couldn't see anything, so I, I just know the guy came over and told me that, that he was out. Xavier with another pair of interceptions. Have you seen, obviously, it comes in a massive moment, but where have you seen his development? I just think his, his ability to stay tight on coverage, and then he does a great job of finding the ball and then finishing the play. And it's tough to do when, when, when all of a sudden you become the receiver and the receiver's hanging on you, and it's you know vice versa of what he's used to. It's it's not an easy catch to make. It's so hard every week to have to win this game. As you said many times, 
talk about the just the importance of just getting out of the game three and zero. How important that is to your season. Well, I mean, anytime we play at home, it's we're, you know our guys are taking a lot of pride in making sure that that we're coming out of this place with a W. You know, I thought the crowd was got really really loud, especially on the third downs with the defense out there. You know, I, there, there's great great juice to where like you can feel it. Our players are feeding off it, and you know we just got to make sure that we take care of business when we're we're playing home games. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the interviews. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, and as always, if you did, please hit the subscribe button. You know, share it with your friends. Post on Facebook. You know, whatever. Hit the like button and definitely leave me some comments, questions, concerns, anything you'd like to see or hear in the videos. Um, you know, stuff like that. So definitely let me know. And of course, the most important thing is subscribe. Uh, so with that said, I'll see you guys soon. And fins up.